Ah, how the mighty have fallen. At one point, ID Software was literally on top of the gaming world. Games like Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Quake, and their sequels pretty much built the first-person shooter genre. Making the games open source only increased the shelf life of these games, as the source ports that modified the engines helped the games become more advanced, from the Doom engine powering many fan mods due to its ease of modability and gaining many features such as 3D support and network online play, to the modern ID Tech 4 engine being free and open source while many of their engines were used in various games, from a modified version powering the original Half-Life to the ID Tech 3 engine powering many games and with one notable licensee, Infinity Ward, modifying it into the well-known IW engine. And you can tell this because many new Call of Duty games have the little thing on the box that says it uses technology licensed from ID Software. However, ID Software has since fallen from those glory days. Licensees have gone on to make games with other engines such as the Unreal Engine, while other developers have churned out games with their intellectual property, some of which have been good, such as Return to Castle Wolfenstein, while others gaining more mixed receptions. And even when they did occasionally release a game, it would get a mixed reception many times. For example, Doom 3, which despite getting positive reviews, was controversial due to the fact that it changed its focus, or Rage, which was a total flop. Wolfenstein The New Order is yet another new ID software licensed game, this time developed by Machine Games, which was formed of ex Starbreeze Studio developers, the makers of the Chronicles of Riddick games. Considering how the last Wolfenstein game from 2009 got mixed reception, with some praising it as unrated while others bashing it, hopes were high for this game. After all, in the early 2000s, Return to Castle Wolfenstein was released to much critical acclaim from players and critics. So what would this new game be like? Would it be a return to this, or would it heavily miss the mark? Let's find out, shall we? Now, I'm going to be playing this game on the Xbox 360 as my family video did not have any more copies of this game on the Xbox One. However, I did notice a major problem the second I opened the package of the 360 version. The game is spread over four discs. Not two, not three, but four Xbox 360 discs. Keep in mind this is suspicious when the game is on more discs than games like Watch Dogs, Grand Theft Auto 5, Battlefield 3 and 4, Call of Duty Ghosts, Halo 4. Many late 360 games are only on two disc. And you know what makes it worse? One of the discs is an install disc. And it's used solely for installing the game. While I didn't have to download a 5 gig or 7.3 gig patch on the 360, it took about 30 to 40 minutes to install the game to the hard drive. This should be a warning of just how bad this game actually is. But you know, let's actually start the review because this game might turn out to be good, right? I mean, after all, everybody was hyping it as a old school first person shooter. So once you start the game, you'll start realizing just how bad this game is. The storyline is pretty much this. It's the most generic story you'll ever experience in an FPS. Somehow Machine Games has managed to take Wolfenstein and stuff whatever bad idea they could come up with this week in it. The storyline goes like this. It's 1946, the Allies are losing the war, and after you, you got your godlike soldier, after he survives everything being thrown at him, including a plane crash, Nazi doctors, robotic dogs, and various random glitches and quick time events, as you can already see right here,
Yes, that actually happened. And I also glitched a few other times in my playthrough as you'll see what happens next. But let me get back to the story. Basically, you get hit in the head with a piece of metal and you go into a coma. Until you wake up in a nursing home after the Nazis shoot it up. Because keep in mind, this has to be a generic war story with an already done-to-death plot themes of how evil the Nazis were and how their war crimes were terrible. Now, this would have been one thing had the game not been called Wolfenstein, nor had the game been marketed as an old-school shoot-em-up game on the style of games such as Serious Sam, Quake, or the like. The problem is, this game was marketed like those games, and not like a realistic World War shooter game. And this is a common theme with this game. The game can't decide what it wants to be, especially when you have long, drawn-out cutscenes about this fictional, alternate timeline, which we all know has been done to death with games like Singularity, Time Shift, Bioshock Infinite, and the like. But anyways, let's get on to the gameplay. The gameplay is basically a cut-rate, scripted, run-in-the-line Call of Duty clone. And I don't mean this in a good way, either. Keep in mind, this is supposed to be a Wolfenstein game. This is supposed to be a game about shooting Nazis. The only thing this game gets right is the 60 frames per second. And guess what? Call of Duty does 60 frames per second, too. In fact, Black Ops 2 looks better than this game, but I'll get into that later. The game was designed badly. Basically, every single level in the game is run through a corner, a script event here or there, duck, cover, fire, run out of ammo, die from getting swamped with enemies which act like bullet sponges and glitch a lot while running through, like I said, linear maps, and it bores you to death. To add further insult to the injury, the game has long loading times. Due to the fact that it's powered by the buggy ID Tech 5 engine, you'll notice tons of glitches from the fact that enemies will basically act like bullet sponges where they'll you'll literally unload your whole clip into them and they won't die to the fact that the loading times can be 20 to 30 seconds every time you die. So imagine dying due to the difficulty being inconsistent which varies from easy to what is wrong with this game. And once you fight with the difficulty and if you die, well, you have to basically wait 20, 30 seconds to reload your last checkpoint. Because another modern FPS feature this game has is checkpoint saves. You see, this game will only save at a checkpoint. And keep in mind, the checkpoints aren't placed like, let's just say, next to a horde of enemies, unlike, say, games such as Time Shift, where if you get a checkpoint, it'll be, like, next to a horde of enemies. I mean, that game had well-designed checkpoints, and this game, on the other hand, a pain. You'll have to replay sections over and over again just when you think you got past that one section you really hated. The controls are terrible. The weapon wheel, for example, does not pause your game when you have to use it, and you might have to finicky around with it just to get it working. So you'll be flicking your controller around because it's so finicky, and you'll find yourself getting killed because you were trying to flick the weapon wheel to use a different weapon. Another thing you might as well notice about this amazing game is the fact that the grenade button is the same button as the weapon wheel. And yet, the grenade is one of the options you can pick. So, even though if you tap the grenade button to throw a grenade, you can also manually select it. Which can make it confusing for those used to old shooter games where you did not have a grenade button to press. And hope you got a kill. Oh, and did I mention you also get enemies that are a total nightmare to kill, such as these robots? You have to use grenades, and a very special kind, and what if you don't get them or waste them? Well, you're dead and you have to wait 20 to 30 seconds for the game to load, load, load again. 
To make matters worse, I've heard that the game was pretty short as well. And after I've said all this stuff about how the controls feel weird, such as with the weapon wheel and that kind of stuff, especially considering how many older console PS ports had you cycling through weapons like on a PC game, you start to notice something. Even though this game was advertised as being old school, this game is nowhere near old school. Even though certain people, such as the media and reviewers who have ads conveniently located for the game next to their 9 out of 10 review, and after all said and done, this game isn't old school at all. You want an old school game? You can go play Serious Sam. You can go play Duke Nukem 3D. You can play Doom. You can play Quake. You can still play Return to Castle Wolfenstein. And keep in mind, this game, if this game is old school, Call of Duty must be too. Because after all, Call of Duty does have some over the top weapons too. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody wants you to play a real war shooter game and kill everybody with a crossbow. But then again, let's be honest here. This game is just straight up trash. The graphics are trashy too. They look like Quake 4 at a faster frame rate. And with a few more textures because I've seen 2006, 2007 games look better than this game does. I mean, this is a 360 version. But even the next-gen versions aren't too spectacular, graphics-wise. And another thing, dual-wielding can screw you up a lot, especially because you can't aim down sights. And this can come in handy, especially because you have very limited ammo. And this can kill you a lot, because then you'll have to knife people, and that can be a pain. One last frustrating thing is, remember I said the game had identity issues? Well, it's not just the cutscenes. You see, many times in the game, the game decides it wants to be Metal Gear Solid, or another stealth game. So basically, what do you do? You creep up on enemies, and use modern 2013 game execution moves. I'm not kidding. And, you can, and there's also a signal detected where, if any of them see you, you basically get destroyed by these enemies. Because they'll just swarm you. However, if you can find the commander and assassinate him, it's a lot easier. And this can make the game real frustrating. Especially as you try to struggle to find the commander only to get seen and get killed. Because the game is schizophrenic and can't tell if it wants to be a wannabe old school shooter game or a duck and cover shooter game. I'm not making this up. And to make matters worse, I know this sounds like a nitpick, but one of my friends who beat the game told me that not only does this game happen to be short too, but it also lacks Adolf Hitler in a robot is the final boss. This might sound like a nitpick, but keep in mind, one of the main things of the original Wolfenstein was fighting Hitler as the final boss. And yet here you are, you can't even fight the final boss of the series that the series is known for that's like making a mario game without bowser i mean sure mario is a formulatic series but even then it's basically one of the things that they always have and let's be honest that's what that's like but anyways now it's time to end this review with my final thoughts this game is straight up trash. I'm not making this up here. The game is buggy, unoptimized, with bleg graphics on all platforms. It has a 5 to 7 gigabyte patch on next gen. And you know to make this game worse of all? This game doesn't feel like Wolfenstein. It is not an old school first person shooter game. Despite the marketing clearly trying to lean it towards that, it's about as much of an old school first person shooter as Call of Duty is. And there's no multiplayer either. While this would sound like a bad thing, you have to keep in mind, Return to Castle Wolfenstein and Enemy Territory both were known for having good multiplayers. It's basically 
weird, especially considering how recent this game was made. So anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more, and please, there are better games you can buy than Wolfenstein. I mean, if you want to play a Wolfenstein game, you can go to your GameStop, buy Retur or a used game store, buy Return to Castle Wolfenstein for a few bucks, and it's on the backwards compatibility list, even if it doesn't run the best. So all in all, that's all I have to say. Don't buy this game. It's pure garbage. It can't tell what it wants to be, and you will get frustrated at this game. Unless you believe that getting frustrated at a game is the old school experience. And that's all I have to say, really. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more.